Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colts cast. I am here to talk about everything and anything Indianapolis Colts. I'm Eric Smith, your host of the Colts cast today. Jamal Lawrence is in Punta Cana right now. You know, he's vacationing, so it's just me today. Look, let's get right into it. Patrick Sertain II. Everyone has heard the name. Whether you watched his dad in the 2000s or know of his son, who is a shutdown corner, you know exactly who I'm talking about. The Denver, the Denver Broncos, they haven't looked great this year. They really haven't. Um, they just got a win over the Kansas City Chiefs, which is a huge win for them. Uh, but so did we last year, and look how good we were. Um, not a good at all. Good enough for the number four overall pick. Just not good to be a contender. Uh, so uh, that kind of begs the question, will the Broncos be sellers at the deadline? Uh, let's assume they are still for this episode. Let's just assume that um, they might not be. They might, you know, we'll find out in 24 hours. Uh, we're coming up really close on NFL trade deadline tomorrow. But should we try and acquire this talented cornerback? Can we do it without giving up a ton of draft capital? Let's dive in. Patrick Sertain II, 23 years old. He's on contract through 2025 with a fifth-year option available. Certified lockdown cornerback. He's young. He's quite boss, possibly the best player on their roster, right? On the Denver Broncos? Could be. I mean, you could, you could argue maybe Russell Wilson. You know, who knows? But... It, it begs the question. So all pro type of talent. Uh, I believe he fits Chris Ballard's type of player, you know, type of player mold. He would want a big, long athletic corner who can play man or zone. So not scheme dependent. Sign me up. Sign me up. If we can get this man, sign me up. <laughs> so should we try to acquire him? Absolutely. Here's the catch. He's going to cost a lot, a lot of capital. Uh, and not a lot in terms of the quantity of picks, but the value of the picks. So I think, I mean, let's just start off. It's going to cost at least a first round pick. Like you have to put that on the table for them to even pick up the phone. I'm being, I'm being dead serious. So we already have the first round pick, but I think it's going to take most likely a side of fries, you know, well, not really fries, but you know, aside to the entree, uh, a second round pick. I think at least a first and a second before they they will even, you know, entertain the offer. Um, the Broncos don't really have a big reason to move him, you know, and unless they get a gigantic package in return or they really just want to start fresh, which we're going to say they're doing for this scenario. They, they want to start fresh, um, you know, maybe – the Sean Payton or the Russell Wilson experiment did not work out in their favor, and, and they kind of just want to move on. But, you know, they have three wins so far. You know, we'll see what happens. But the trade deadline is approaching, so they have to make a decision pretty quickly. So in this scenario, they are going to sell off some assets. Um, so can the Indianapolis Colts make this happen? They could. They really could. Uh, look at it this way. Instead of taking a shot in the draft with our first and second round pick, wouldn't you rather have a proven player in Patrick Sertain the second, an arguably top five player at his position? I would. I would personally, especially after what we've seen in the last two games for our cornerback play. You know, I'd be okay with giving up uh, those two picks for this guy. Get my opinion. Uh, please don't hold it against me. Uh, I'll have a discussion about it, but. You know, maybe a 2025 first round pick and a 2024 second round pick. You know, if that could do the deal, I would I, I would love that because right now I think we're projected at number seven overall. If the draft happened today, uh, we would have the seventh overall pick. That's a top 10 pick. You know, that, we had a possibility to get a game changing player uh, in the prospect we draft. So I would like to keep that pick. You know, if they really said, uh, look, you know, we want your 2024 first round pick. Okay. That's fine, because I know I'm getting a proven commodity back. That's how I feel about it. Um, but I think that's going to be the max amount for me. A first and a second. You know, you start adding on more picks or players. 
I, I mean, we, we talking about that. That's at the caliber of like a quarterback trade almost it. I I just wouldn't feel good about it. Um, giving up more than that. Not sure how you guys feel, ladies and gentlemen. You know, let me know in the comments. If you've listened this far, let me know. Well, one, would you even want Patrick Sertain? I would hope you said yes, but it really depends on what we would give up for him. So again, you know, follow all that up in the comments, you know, let me know. But again, cornerback is, in my opinion, one one of the hardest positions to get right. I mean, just think about it. We drafted three this year and we still didn't solve the issue. Juju Brents, Darius Rush, Jalen Jones, three cornerbacks, and we still haven't solved the issue. So why do you want to corner this bad, Eric? I mean, we we have a significant deficiency at this position. We lost Stephon Gilmore to the Dallas Cowboys. Isaiah Rogers lost him to gambling. Dallas Flowers is on injured reserve. Juju Brents is hurt, so we don't have much depth. Darius Rush was cut pretty early on. That was supposed to be a secret steal of the draft. Got him in the fifth round. Thought he was at least going to make the roster. That didn't happen. Gave up on him. Let's get some stability at this position. I mean, a young lockdown corner automatically makes this team so much better. Do you really want to see Tony Brown take another snap on the outside again? I asked you that. No, you don't. So I'm in it for this theoretical situation. Um, I, I think just adding Patrick Sertain, if we can do it, if we could somehow make it happen, we don't know what's happening behind closed doors. Chris Ballard could be making it happen. It'd be a huge blockbuster trade just, just from our standpoint as a as a as a franchise. You know, we we don't make all the splash signing. So it would really it would help us out now. I don't know if a lot of fans want to hear that. Do do we want to be competitive right now at three and five? But It'd help us out now, but I'm looking towards the future. You know, this guy, you know, through 2025, we can have him and then hopefully resign him. And then he'll be in his prime. He'll be ready to go, man. That would be great. On the flip side, we lose, you know, a few draft picks. So whether that be a great offensive line, lineman prospect, pass rushing talent, uh, wide receiver prospect, uh, which I know a lot of people think we can get Marvin Harrison Jr. or want Marvin Harrison Jr. I want him too, but he's projected to be a top five pick. So can we squeeze into that range? We maybe can. I mean, at the, at the rate we're going, it's possible. We could squeeze into that top five, maybe. But the trade deadline's tomorrow. Trade deadline's tomorrow. So are we banking on losing enough to get in that range? to bet on one of the best wide receiver prospects of all time? Or should we improve our team for the future right now? You know, this wide receiver draft is loaded. Marvin Harrison Jr. is projected to be the best prospect right now, but there's a lot of good wide receiver talent in this draft. You know, if it was up to me, I vote Patrick Sertain II for first and second round pick. Again, up to me. Um, again, probably won't happen. I, I'm giving it like a 15% chance <laughs> because I know a lot of teams are interested and I don't know how much Chris Ballard, Jim Mercer, this organization is interested in, in giving up draft capital for Patrick Sertain second. Um, but just my opinion, uh, add in a lockdown corner. I, I feel like it's vital to this roster right now. Um, and and if they really want to stay competitive this year and, and Shane Steichen's first year as a head coach, you add Patrick Sertain to the outside. Defense just gets dramatically better. I you know, pass rush, we, we could do better in that department. We're lacking there, but you you get a better corner out there, everything changes. Just just ask Stefan Gilmore how many games he won last year single handedly when it came to crunch time. Let me know what you all think about this trade scenario. Love to hear from you guys, Colts Nation. That's going to be it for me. Thank you for listening to the Colts cast today. We're live on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, any platform. <coughs> Excuse me. You just listen to podcasts. We did have some technical difficulties um, yesterday, so we didn't get the post game show out, but we'll have this episode out on audio and YouTube. You guys, take care. <laughs>